One of the nicest things is that we are in a place which you know that people year round don't have such great opportunities to hear great performances of classical music. And then they seem to be quite hungry for it. And that's something which is very admirable. It's a kind of mission or that he really loves this. He doesn't want to have just a glamorous audience of, of music lovers coming from all over the world, but he wants to have the local population involved. I think he's, he seems to have succeeded with that. I would like to explode in the end. Yeah. Chamber music is the archetype of community. It requires skillful listening, empathy, and a quick responsiveness to your partner. Here, Julian works with Life Over Ansnes, the acclaimed pianist who regularly sells out at Carnegie Hall and the Musikverein in Vienna. We are a little bit out of the, of the center of the limelight of the industry, let's say. On the other hand, you know, you're surrounded by very good musicians and you want to give your best because you're, you're with such good musicians. So a concert is a concert and I think in such festivals one can maybe even give more sometimes. And it's not a holiday, you know, it's, it's nice to be here and it's nice to go for a swim, but we also work and, and we, we, we play concerts as good as we can. something fully that we can say, okay, this is what I love, this is who I am, and so on. That's very important, next to just playing. Julian Rachlin founded this festival at the tender age of 25. It is a private venture involving high financial risk. No other festival with such illustrious artists is as accessible to the public. Tickets are kept affordable and start at the low price of just seven euros. The virtue of the festival is at once its vice. <laughs> this festival should not only be for the rich. It should primarily be for the inhabitants of Dubrovnik, for the students and for those who don't earn that much. And there are a lot of those here. I don't want to earn money by selling tickets. That is not important to me. I do it the difficult way and uh, look for sponsors. Regular guests include Erna Bayer Gotze, who grew up in Vienna, and Ragusa, as Dubrovnik was formerly known. We all experience Racklin and the entire ensemble as a miracle. We're always completely in awe, as if we were living in a different world. At the amazing age of 97, this venerable, alert lady loves to amble through the alleys after a concert, the perfect place to let the musical experience linger on. The whole ambience of Rector's Palace, the people sitting there, and everyone knows everyone. Everyone is talking to everyone. The men even smoke up there. That somehow is an experience. And that's why Rackin is so close to our hearts. Somehow he's one of us. I got a festival ticket and was supposed to choose a seat, but I didn't want to sit. It's all so cramped. Up there, though, you can walk around and say, well, what do you think? Wonderful. But we chat. Or if, if you're too tired to get up and walk around a bit, you could sit down.
Rachman's festival is also an exchange between the generations. Mr. Bond, James Bond, Sir Roger Moore has been supporting the young musicians since the festival was founded in 2001. Also, ich meine in my opinion, Racklin contributes a lot to getting more culture into the city. That's incredibly generous. You know, a pass for all concerts costs 300 kunas. That's not even 50 euros. 40 euros for all concerts. Even Ragusans can afford that. Even the poor pensioners. Das kann sich an jeder Ragusane leisten, auch die armen Pensionäre. Although all the musicians in attendance are stars in their own right, Julian Rocklin and Friends affords itself the luxury of not allowing the festival to degenerate into yet another society event. Music takes the limelight here. And to make sure it stays this way, the musicians rehearse up to 10 hours a day before the evening concerts. The stardom factor is simply cancelled out by the need to work. And even Roger Moore is expected to be at rehearsals on time. I listen to music for nothing. I don't have to pay to hear the greatest musicians in the world. And I know I love, I was not that familiar with chamber music uh, until I met Julian. I think they're also fortunate to have that much talent, to have that amount of energy to devote themselves to the, the hours and hours of cruel practice. Sir Roger will read an accomplished translation of the letters of Mozart wrote to his family, which are peppered with dialect expressions and expletives. Right, so then, my very dear friend, for you alone, blah, 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 most obedient and grateful, sir. You know, the genius that there is in a mind like Julian's, where he can perform Beethoven fourth for 45 minutes without a note of music in front of him. All those notes are in his cop, I mean. And he doesn't know how he, how he does it. I can barely remember my name. The best thing is for the rehearsal to be a disaster. Nothing beats that. It was half a disaster this time, that's a good sign. If you have a great rehearsal, then there is a 90% chance that you will have a bad concert. Superstition. Trying and failing, and being allowed to fail. Exceptional musicians take the time to explore their limits in territory that lies beyond mass appeal. Boldly, Julian Rachlin not only gathers big talents around him, but throws them the gauntlet. In setting his ambitions so high, he's managed to win over the Croatian Prime Minister, who has agreed to some financing for the festival. It was the first time the Prime Minister of Croatia attended. I think the city and country have for the first time recognized the significance of the festival. And now they want to submit a financing plan for the next three years. For me, that's a very good sign. It's a great, great honor for me. I fought hard for this moment for eight years. 